Paul Eldridge was an American poet, novelist and teacher. Born in 1888 in Bucharest, Romania, the son of Leon Eldridge and Jeanette Lafleur. Educated at Temple University, the University of Pennsylvania and the University of Paris. Between 1910 and 1912, he was instructor of English literature at St. John's College in Philadelphia. In 1913, he became lecturer on American literature at the Sorbonne. In 1923, he taught American literature at the University of Florence. At some point, he married writer and stage actress Sylvette de Lamar. He died in 1982 in Manhattan. He was most well known for his collaboration with George Sylvester Virek on four novels, chiefly known for My First Two Thousand Years, the autobiography of the Wandering Jew. His first book of poetry, Life Throbs, came out in 1911. In 1921, he published his first collection of prose, And the Sphinx Spoke, which we shall be reviewing today. Paradise Regained is a nasty little fantasy about Adam and Eve being allowed to return to Eden, where everything seeing as it cannot die, is unbelievably old and haggard. They leave, and Adam wants to tell his descendants the truth and burn down Eden, but Eve stops him and tells him to lie and say how beautiful it is to keep her from shame. In The Golden Wedding, a couple, married for 50 years, celebrate their golden wedding, and the bridegroom, intoxicated on champagne, realizes how futile it was to keep being faithful to the wreck that sits and snores before him. Dead Leaves is a short affair, where an old woman has died and her husband doesn't seem to comprehend it. Art is a short fable about a great poet who cannot write anymore, due to the overwhelming love for his wife. So he kills her, but he loves her more so after death, and spends his days writing straight lines. In Evil's Good, a man falls out of a window, to the delight of all the spectators, inspiring them to many good and charitable deeds. Crosses is a short fable where we find out why a man has his body covered in, you guessed it, crosses. The Chinese doll is about an old woman whose great-granddaughter's granddaughter starts to think of her as a doll and to treat her as such. The Golden Apple is a fairy tale where a princess refuses to marry any man who does not bring her the Golden Apple from the tree at the edge of the world. No one manages this, of course, and one day the princess notices two wrinkles on her face and decides she was a little demanding. So when next a prince comes to beg for her hand, she prepares a fake golden tree with a fake gold apple at the edge of her kingdom, which the knight requires easily enough. However, seeing that such a short journey would most likely not make a great epic, he stays behind in a peasant's cottage. Then when it is time to go, he scratches his chest, damages his helmet, and dips his sword in pig blood, and goes off to marry the princess. The next section is titled Pastels, and is a collection of, let's say, stories for lack of a better word. The first is more or less well done, but most of the others are dreadful and pointless. The protagonist of Words is unable to express his love to the woman of his dreams, and so one night, out of jest, he expresses it to the woman he would want to marry least. As it turns out, he fears how much of an ass he would be to break off with said woman now. So he marries her, and lives a wonderfully unhappy marital existence. In Happiness, an angel sent to spread happiness comes across a one-legged man, who helps him understand that the only way humanity's spirits will be raised is to constantly spread misfortune upon them, one half at a time, so the other may find itself consoled. The Thinker is a short tale describing the ideals of a positively unsympathetic tree. In Popularity, a tree is struck down and ants praise it for it almost as long as this description. Mouse Preaches on Heaven is a fragmentary piece of a mouse preaching of a mouse heaven where mice shall forever torment cats. In I Am the Coffin, a coffin tells us what it is, not badly written mind. In Icebergs, um, an iceberg is disillusioned? In Illusion, a mouse is convinced by a canary he is not a prisoner but a king, even when he is taken to be drowned. In Morituri te salutant, some beggars salute Jehovah, whom they think the oldest and poorest of the gods. And in To Posterity, the author wishes to give posterity the finger. I would say the collection as a whole is not bad, the author being somewhat disillusioned with life, though the pastels can be a bit too fragmentary. 